couple of things before what was necessary. We spoke about Mirit must show respect to the holy places, holy days, and holy nights. That much respect that you have, that much honor is going to be given to you. It is not how much worship that you do to. It is how much value you give to that worship. It is not running every few months to go to Mecca, to go to Medina, to make the Umrah. It is how much value you put in it. Those ones who are going when they have nothing better to do, it's just because of that. They have nothing better to do. They went everywhere, they circled everywhere. They get sour from this world. They say, what else is there? Oh, let's go to Mecca and Medina. And later, mm, let's talk about it and let's brag to all our friends that we went to Umrah. How much blessings are we going to get from that? Not too much. The blessings and the reward comes with that much respect that we give to it. The respect comes with adab. The adab you cannot learn from books. Impossible. The adab manners you must learn from the prophets. And the prophets all of them came with books, but they did not come with a physical book. The book that they came is from their heart to their tongue, and they put it in the Sahabi's heart. That is a book. That is the original way of teaching. That is the only way of teaching to bring out the spirituality from dead hearts. Otherwise, if the heart is dead and you start reading, it's not going to open your heart. You're going to get more stubborn, more arrogant that time. Especially in these days, books, they are written not to increase the knowledge, but it is to increase the pockets of those ones who are writing it or the publishers. Say it to me otherwise. So you learn respect from those ones who have respect. You learn respect from the Holy Prophet, who taught respect who taught adab to his sahabis. So of course, if we show a little bit about how the sahabi kiram, they showed respect to the Prophet wasalam, majority of the world's Muslims, not non-Muslims, Muslims are going to say these ones are too extreme. These ones, they're too extreme, they're too radical. It's too much. They are worshipping to him, isn't it? They are going to say that. They're going to start judging the Sahabis to say they are worshipping to the Prophet. What is this? They're running to kiss his hand? What is this? They're running to kiss his feet? What is this? They're running to collect his wudu water? Everything about him is holy, they're saying. This is too extreme, this is too radical, this is crazy. Which is why the Holy Prophet wasalam, said, if they see you, talking to his sahabi kiram, if they see you with your faith, they're going to say you are crazy. If you see them, people of Ahir Zaman, us, you are going to call them unbelievers. May Allah protect us from that. But this is not something to be laughed at because you're doing so much zikr, you're doing so much prayer, you're doing so much hajj, umrah, whatever that you're doing, you much so much saraka, zakat but you are showing disrespect you lose your respect you're showing wrong manners to the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves all may turn to zero where is our dalil? our dalil is shaitan he worshipped so much. He worshipped when he was sent to this world to correct his own people. And he had no mercy. He says, finish them all, Ya Rabbi. They are not worshipping to you. And he did that job good. At that time, he was known as Azazil. He was not shaitan yet. Shaivan is saying, the one who worshipped so much, there is not 
a single spot on this face of this earth that shaitan did not put his forehead down to worship to Allah. Azazil. That Shah Badin Naqshbandi, our peer, is saying, if I find only one handful of dirt, a space in this world, on this earth, that shaitan did not put his forehead on it, I would hide all the children of Adam in that small spot to save them from him. But he couldn't find. He worshipped 40,000 years in this world. 40,000 years. You start thinking. You are 20, 40, 50, 60 years of age. Then calculate. From that, say you are 60 years of age. 60 years of age, you don't start praying until you are 13, 14, 15, 16. Even then, you pray like this or like that. It's not counted. Let's say 20 years is finished. Then, out of the 40 years, how much time do you sleep? Hmm? People these days, they sleep and they sleep and they sleep and they don't dream. Sleeping 10 hours, 12 hours, half of the life is gone now. So you have 40 years, 20 years you spend in sleeping. Out of that 20 years, how much time you spend eating? Because new style now, Muslims. They say, what time shall I meet you, Ali? Uh, meet me at lunchtime. What time should I meet you, eh, Mahmoud? Uh, dinner time. The day it is divided according to the food, like animals. The day is not divided according to the times that Allah is calling to us. In the old days, they say, when are we going to meet? Fajr time, Zuhr time, Maghrib time. If days are like that, the weeks are also like that. Looking forward to the day, to the week of what? Where the ego can enjoy, not Juma. If the weeks is like that, how are the months? Oh, same thing. Looking forward to the um, celebrations of this year, of the calendar, just according to the ego. No longer looking now according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting there. So yeah, today's Muslims has come to that situation. So now, put everything together and say how much time you spend in 60 years of life, really, in prayer. Combine it all together. Don't go too far. Just say, today, let me combine all my five daily prayers like this or like that, 15 minutes. Then multiply that by how many days in a year, multiply that by how many years that you are living. Then you come to an answer. Shaitan worshipped for 40,000 years. And he was worshipping so much to Allah that he started raising. He started rising up. He started to levitate. And he was reaching to the paradises, and every paradise that he reached, he worshipped more. He was rising higher and higher. And he was increasing in knowledge too, because every level that you go, knowledge is going to be open to you. He was rising, and he was knowing certain things, that the angels, he was not an angel, he was a jinn, the angels, they started asking him, consulting with him. He started giving knowledge to the angels, not the archangels. We are the angels. Archangels, different. And he had all this knowledge. And he had all this worship. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the creation of Adam alayhi salam. Make no mistake, Adam alayhi salam was not just created there. Mankind was not just created. 
the spirit of the man was not just created. The spirit of the man was created way before anything else was created. We are a hidden treasure. We are the original treasure. Because everything has been created for the deputy of Allah, which is Bani Adam. But when Allah revealed that creation, and first Allah revealed the physical form of Adam salam. It is a long story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the angels to go down to the earth and to pick some earth to make the form of Adam salam. Everything else in creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kun fayakun. But with Adam salam, his deputy, Allah took time. Shaykh Effendi is saying Allah molded it with his own hands. Not these hands, of course. We are not Wahhabis to say Allah has hands, Allah has face, Allah sits down, Allah stands up. Like that Shaitan Ibn Taymiyyah coming down the uh, mimbar when somebody asks him how Allah comes down, just like this, boom, 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 coming down. It's just like this. Lahu kufu wa nahad. It's nothing that is compared to him. So now Allah molded Adam alayhi salam from the earth. But the angel, when he went down to the world to take the earth, the earth started screaming. The earth says, don't take from me. Because shaitan knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to create a new creature that was going to occupy the highest, the most praised station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever created, the Maqam al-Mahmud. So now shaitan all his worship and everything that he has done was for that Maqam al-Mahmud. It was not for Allah. It was for that Maqam. That's why he was running so hard. But when he saw that, and he says, possibility is not going to be. Jealousy Anger, disobedience start to enter into him. And he went and he poisoned everything. He poisoned the earth too. So the earth says, no, I'm not going to give. When the angel came, the angel saying, I'm coming from Allah. No, I'm not going to give from me. Then the angel went back. And Allah saying, what happened? Subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything, but this is something for us to learn from. Because if he doesn't ask, we're not going to know the answer. The angel says, as you know, Ya Rabbi, this is what happened. Allah sent another angel. Same thing happened. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel, Azrael, to go down. And when Azrael went down, the earth started screaming and say, don't do this to me. And that Azrael, he did not care. He says, this is Allah's command. I don't care what you say to me, I'm going to take it. So he took, and he took earth, not from one place, that some foolish ones also saying, ah, uh, black mud. So it must mean that original man is African-American. All prophets are African-American. This is not in Islam. You may put something later and you may fool your own people, it's okay. But it is not in Islam. The angel then took earth from 40 different spots. 40 different colors of the earth. Combine it. Although the earth screamed, the angel did not care. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, now, because of the strength that you are showing, when the Bani Adam, they are going to be in this world, 
I will give you, because only you can do it, the power and the task to go down and to take their life. No matter how much they scream, you are not going to turn, your heart is not going to soften. So Allah molded that. And shaitan saw and he understood that this creature is going to be for that maqam. He had so much knowledge, he knew. But he was blind. What is he blinded by? Jealousy. He was blinded by disobedience. He was blinded by stubbornness. He was so angry with his Lord. All his worship did not save him because he let all those qualities to overtake him. He entered then through the mouth of Adam salam, when the angels asked, what is this creature? And he circled around everywhere, through every vein in the body. And he came out through the bottom. Which is why Holy Prophet wasalam, also said, Shaitan is running through every vein in the man's body. And when you feel angry, you feel everything, your blood pressure goes up. Because hmm? Shaitan now is circling around. And he came out and he says it's empty, it is nothing. Shaitan is saying also, he said, there's a possibility, this is the new creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to create. It's going to occupy that maqam, but if Allah command me to bow down in front of him, I will not. He already made up his mind then. So he had all this knowledge, he had all this worship, but he refused to respect those ones that Allah loves. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, make sujood, make sajda to Adam alayhi salam, to all the angels, and in reality everything in creation, to make sujood to Adam alayhi salam, shaitan is saying, I will not. Excuse he gives is what? I make sajda only to you. There is an excuse. Because the creature with so much knowledge, he's not going to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you make sujood to me, you make sajda to me, then you have to make sajda to my words and to my commands and to my laws, that if I ask you to make a sujood to a stone, you're going to do it. You think he doesn't know that? That's why some people, some groups, some nations, they're very shaitanic. They think with arguing too much, then they can get their own way. It is not the quality of a believer to argue, which is why to ask why in tariqat, it is forbidden. To argue in tariqat is forbidden. To fight, oh, what can we say to fight? These days, murids, non-stop fighting with each other. Instead of fighting with your ego, you fight with each other. He said, I make sajda only to you, not to this one. He lost his respect and Allah says, get out from my sight. Get out from my sight. So those ones who have lose their respect, who lose their manners and their adept to Allah, to Allah's Prophet, Wassalam, through his awliya Allah, they are dismissed from Allah's presence and they become shaitan. Doesn't matter if they worship, doesn't matter if they own Mecca and Medina, they're outside of the divine presence. They become just like shaitan. We are speaking these words because we are entering into the holy month of Rabil Awal soon. But I don't think you entering into that month is just a month to make salawats and nats and kasidas and just to sing and to dance and to be happy.
It's better than not celebrating it, of course. But for us, for the Murids of Sahib al Saif, we are not children, alhamdulillah. If we remember the Prophet, والسلام, we must remember what he loves, who he gives respect to, what he loves. Correct? Not just loving him, but loving those whom he loves. Yes, Shia is saying who he loves only the Ahlil Bayt. Wrong. On the day of judgment, he is not running for his own family. Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha asked her father Rasulullah alayhi wasallam on the day of judgment where can I find you ya Rasulullah yeah, you know what his answer was I will be in the pond of Kawsar giving water to the ummah that on the day of judgment he is the one who's going to be raised up first and the angels are going to come with a burak for him. Israfil, Azrael, they will come. Jibrail, alayhi salam, they will come to give him a divine crown and a flag. And he will get up first and he will see. And he says, Ya Jibrail. Where is my nation? And Jibreel alayhi salam says, Did you not see the crown on your head? He says, That's not my question. Where is my nation? Did you not see the burak? That is not my question. Where is my nation? And he start to cry. Then, the nation started coming forward in groups. And Alayhi Wasallam is going to rush to look. And he says, this is not my nation. He will rush to look to the nation of Nuh Alayhi Salaam and says, this is not my nation. He will look through all the nations of the prophets and he's going to say, this is not my nation. Ya Jibrail, where is my nation? If you love me, answer me. And Jibrail Alayhi Salaam saying, your nation is coming. But they are very slow and they're feeling very heavy and when the Prophet والسلام, saw them coming he started crying even more and that is the time where he's going to ask Shafat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the nation some they're going to rush around to look for a mimbar for the Prophet والسلام, for him to get up they found the Prophet getting up and starts to speak in a very loud voice, calling his nation and says, Come, come to me. Come under my protection where there is no protection in this day. And his nation, we, are going to run to him crying. And he's going to be in sajda asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For shafat. When hell hears that, hell started to cry too and say Ya Rabbi don't let any of his nation to enter into my fire and Prophet والسلام, will be there on the Sirat to help us to cross those who are falling he will pick up but the Shafa'at is for who? for those who believe in the Shafa'at those who don't believe in the Shafat, how are you going to stand in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an order. When the Prophet والسلام, saw his nation, Allah sent a message to Jibrail والسلام, saying, Now bring his entire nation and show them to me. And that is when Holy Prophet والسلام, starts crying even more and saying, Shafat, Ya Rabbi. For my nation. How are you going to get Shafat? These days, no single masjid that I've been to, 
We even make the dua after the azan. Where there is open hadith with the Prophet is saying, when you hear the azan, make this dua and ask for my shafaat. I've been to gathering, Muslim gatherings, we're calling the azan, and they don't even make the dua. I say, why are you not making the dua? They say, oh, well, there is a dalil. You can say that quiet or you can say that loud. I say, we are not in the presence of Wahhabis. What are you hiding from? Your prophet? Because they're so used to now being very apologetic, being very sorry that they are loving that prophet, alayhi and they're standing up for him. So we're entering into that month, inshallah, Rahman. Begin now. Don't begin when the month enters. Because we're talking about manners. We're talking about respect. Everything is coming together now. But as I said, yes, that month is not just to have mega maulids and to give salawat into everything. Yes, you love that Prophet, والسلام, you may show that love. It is good. But what is that Prophet, والسلام, loving his, loving his nation? Now we are part of the nation. Are we concerned about this nation? Are we looking? Are we understanding where our hands are reaching? Are we trying to revive the forgotten sunnats of the Rasulullah wasalam, Or are we going to go now with a new program of Dajjal to say, no need all these external things. That question you can answer very clearly by yourself. Somebody asked me a question before. If I'm weak, if my heart has doubt, what should I do? May I say, start hanging around, being with those ones who are strong in their faith. Be with them. Because this is Allah's order. Be with the Salihin. We are a very weak nation. We cannot carry anything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent from this nation the friends of Allah that they are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. Their power now it is hidden. A little bit, but don't worry, it is going to show, it's going to open. And anyone who is with light, uh, with the people of light, they're going to collect two for themselves. That time you're going to see. That time when all this dust settles, we are going to see who is ahead, whether it's a donkey or a horse. May Allah forgive me and bless all of you, inshallah, Rahman. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, <coughs> We're asking, Ya Rabbi, quickly bring Mahdi alayhi salam. We're asking you, Ya Rabbi, have our grand shaykh and our shaykh to return. We're asking, Ya Rabbi, to make us to be prepared for their coming, Ya Rabbi. Forgive us, we are very weak. Protect us. You are the best of the protector. Keep our faith, Ya Rabbi. We're asking you. You are our protector. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, for the sake of Sahibul Saif, Sultan al Abiya, Al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum.